Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm going to make this very quick. This is going to be an insight into what it's like owning a small business. So let's get into it. This video is going to be cut into different sections. The first section is going to go slowly into an idea of a business and what you can do to make it into reality. The first thing I'm going to say is it's very, very important that you're passionate about your business. Obviously, it's one thing to be very inspired by all the people around you that have started their own business. But at the same time, it's not an overnight process. It does take a lot of research. It takes a lot of love. It takes a lot of care. It's basically like having a baby and watching it grow. In fact, let me start from the beginning. The day I realized I wanted my own business was when I was about, I think when I was like 16, 18, the idea was very, very premature. It was just a thought like in the future, I want to own my own business. I want to say is that it took a lot of time and I started journaling things down and ideas down and stuff that I thought that would be long term versus short term. The first thing I thought about was, okay, what kind of business do I want to do? Do I want to do makeup? Do I want to do skincare? Do I want to do jewellery? I become very very invested in my own ideas if that makes sense as soon as I thought of it I was like it's gonna happen it's gonna happen I, I want it, I need it to happen because it's the only thing I feel like I'll have control over it'll be my own thing I'll be so proud of it and it'll be something so cool to have basically but at the same time I had no idea what I was doing so it was just an idea I just kept at the back of my head until I finished my education so my Instagram really started taking off I started doing promotions with different brands and I had a little insight into how brands work and how they charge influencers and how it really like works for them and then works for me so that helped me look at it from a customer influencer business perspective if that makes sense straight away i started researching now researching doesn't happen overnight it does happen over a long period of time one of the ways you can research is listening to podcasts watching a lot of videos like this video um reading books and now there's obviously social media there's like twitter threads and there's like instagram posts where you can really get into learning how to have your own business video i want to link a few people over here that you can check out who have helped me start my own business and who are very very good and influential with their business advice one of the people that i was watching and listening to was patricia bright with her break platform on youtube she has a lot of amazing videos on how to start a business on what it's like to own a small business and also a lot of podcasts and a lot of videos with other small business owners and how they got to where they are now so the first step is you need to make sure that you're very passionate you need to make sure that you're obsessed basically and making it into something that is yours now it won't work i'll be honest it won't work if you're really not sure what you want to do i would say take as much time as you need to figure out everything and the plan and where you want to be in the next year or the next few months what you want to see literally write it down even if it's as small as oh i want to make my first sale you know, write this kind of stuff down so at least you have a little checklist. Moving on to organisation. Now, it takes a lot of organisation, a lot of budgeting, a lot of figuring out where to go, what to do, who to talk to. Say, I was very blessed with working with different brands and having friends who are already in different businesses such as the food business, clothing business, uh, hijab business. I had a lot of affiliates who I knew already started their business and started asking them questions. I was like, oh, what is it like? A lot of people were very standoffish and I understand that because they want to protect their business. But at the same time, I wasn't really getting like a really thorough explanation of like what it is to own an actual business, the stress and everything. So the first thing is research. And um, when it comes to researching for clothing, I would say, you know, watch documentaries read up on successful brands, read their coming up story, just read how they became very, very successful, where they are now and how they're doing, how they managed to stay relevant. I know it sounds super shallow, but that is one of the ways that businesses work is relevancy, basically finding out a need. So let's talk about the next part. So the next part is basically finding out your target audience. So now you've got the idea in your head, whether it's makeup, skincare, clothing, you've got a small idea. You're like, okay, I want to own this kind of business. You look at the target audience. Do you want to make clothes specifically for girls? Do you want to make clothes specifically for men? Do you want to make clothes for modest fashion? If you're a little bit unsteady on what you want to do, I would say definitely take a step back, look further into researching what you relate the most to because authenticity is one of the most important things when it comes to a business. If you're going into a business that you're going to have to specialize in regardless, like say you want to own a makeup brand, but you don't know anything about makeup. It's a bit silly, but I know a lot of people who have managed to like really start off and then they research later, I would say don't take that risk. 
definitely research into whatever you want to go into so now you've found your niche um, we're going to go with the example of maybe making modest clothing now it's okay what are the steps that i'm going to do to get to where i need to let's talk money how much you want to invest i get a lot of questions of dina like how much should i budget how much should i invest how much did you invest i agree it's very very private questions but at the same time it does help someone who's trying to start off so i'm going to try my best to explain this as simply as possible the budget and how much you invest is very very dependent on you as a person it's not just a specific amount it's not like you put in you know a grand and then you get everything that you want no it's very very specific to what you're doing so say if it's like modest clothing i need to think about okay am i going to be making the clothes myself or am i going to be manufacturing it and getting ready-made items now you have to decide is it going to be something that's custom like me making necklaces by myself or is it going to be something that's going to be manufactured meaning that you have to go out there yourself and find the supplier who makes what you want to make and add your little twist to it let's go with manufacturers i get a lot of questions with oh where do you find a supplier manufacturers guys i'll be honest this comes with research so if you've already passed the initial step which is researching exactly what kind of brand you want to go into automatically i feel like you already know about the manufacturers that are out there and who will basically process the orders or the products for you essentially such as if you're looking into makeup brands and you're watching documentaries on how they started up you'll immediately see a trend of like how they got to know their manufacturers how they got to get suppliers whether it's a uh, lip gloss as well like a lot of people start at home i know that for sure i know a lot of people who are doing skincare they start making something at home and then they later go on to and finding a manufacturer and then giving them the ingredients and then they make it obviously you have to also remember that manufacturers have a lot of cost so a lot of people tend to go for the custom option which is basically they get like the bits and bobs they need to make their business themselves so let's go with the modest fashion example let's say a two-piece you know like a, just a top and a bottom very very plain if you want to do it yourself most likely you're gonna have to think okay what fabric am i gonna get what color am i gonna get who's gonna stitch it for me am i gonna go to a tailor where am I going to find the tailor? How much is it going to cost for me to get to the tailor? You know, you have to ask yourself a lot of questions. This is more very, very specific to what you want to do. Obviously, it's very hard for me to just list what kind of questions you would ask yourself because it depends on the business. Like if you're doing menswear as well, what kind of tailor would you go to? What kind of fabric? Is it heavy duty fabric? Is it something that's really hard to stitch up? You know, it's kind of stuff like that. Whereas if you want to do something that's manufacturer based, most likely more on the expensive side because most manufacturers have a minimum order quantity. So this is something that manufacturers set in place for them to make profit and to make sure that you order a specific amount. So the reason why they do put minimum order quantities is so like basically people don't take the mick, especially because there's a lot of room for people to just be like oh can i get five pieces and then they just cut obviously it's not fair on people who are starting off but it is something to remember a lot of manufacturers you can find online people have different ways to find the perfect manufacturer that is for them that's either by finding if they give a good price etc etc because at the same time these manufacturers have massive machine that mass produce only so they can't really make one item and that's it if anything they will ask you to pay for a sample item so a sample item is most of the time a bit more expensive than just ordering like a hundred of one item but it's worth it because you might have something in your head but say if you go to the manufacturer they might make it into something else so that's where the step comes in for detail it's very very important that you put details in with manufacturers or custom made orders you make sure you have a blue print essentially that anyone else can follow because when you do start to blow up or when you do start to get really big and get a lot of more customers it's going to be very difficult to do everything by yourself so it's important that you keep a blueprint of everything that you do and you keep a folder of budget plans how much you've spent all the steps that you've done because there will come a time where you want to go back and then see what you did and me try and recreate it again so yeah one of the best things that i did was make sure that i keep a copy of everything that i've done whether it's very very small all the way down to my logo because i found myself last week trying to look for a new logo design or something new that i could try out and it was really cool to have my logos printed out and to be able to reference each and every one of them so as soon as you have something in your mind write it down and keep track of it one of the main things is definitely overcompensating being prepared i think of everything that can basically go wrong as ambitious as you should be when owning a business i do make sure that i have a reality check with myself before 
I launch or every time I restock? Can my delivery people mess up again? Can I, is there anything that's broken? Is there anything that's damaged? Is there any liabilities? So definitely, definitely overcompensate. It could be something as small as making sure that you have enough ink for printing out paper. But yeah, I'm aware for the community of small business owners who don't have a car or even a vehicle at hand, especially now during this pandemic, it's very, very hard to just take all your deliveries on a bus or a train. Another thing I would say a big, big tip is do everything that needs to be done at night time so you can be more productive of the day especially if you're someone who sends out physical parcels and not a service and you're not wasting your day doing things that you could have done in the night time such as researching or um, if you need to order more stock i would definitely recommend doing that in the that helped me so much especially when i found myself trying to print out receipts in the morning when I could have easily gone to the post office and sent out parcels for it to be delivered the next day and that literally set me back two business days and that set back the customer receiving their item obviously it doesn't seem bad but if you're someone who ordered something you would expect it to be at your doorstep right away and with no delay okay so I'm going to spend this part of the video answering most asked questions that you guys have sent in through Instagram accounts the business account and my personal account someone asked me about promotions so I have been lucky and blessed enough to not have to pay someone to do my promotions as I have my own platform that I'm able to promote on, especially taking in the blessing, being a big account as well and having a big reach with other people from all around the world. I feel like I'm blessed in that sense. I don't have to pay anyone for advertising, but I do believe that if it's someone that's just starting up a small business on Instagram, I would definitely say it is very beneficial to do promotions to get yourself out. Now, I've had a few friends who started up their business and they weren't social media influencers. And obviously they did not have a ready-made account for them to promote on. And it is a very, very popular method that is used by almost all businesses, if not just small businesses. So there was a moment, obviously, my own friends were purchasing my products, which I still think is crazy to this day. I know a lot of people expect their friends to buy their products, especially with the target audience that I had. Most of them did not really suit criteria. So seeing them purchase things really, really made me happy. With PR especially, I believe it does take out a significant amount from your budget. I do understand it is very a risky thing to do, especially if you don't know the person that you're sending out the product to. You do sometimes hope for the best of them taking pictures or like doing something that you had in your head and them not going through with it. So with that, I would say make sure that you set up a contract either through you know direct messages or emails make sure you set up a contract of when you want them to post when you want them to open the products how much you would pay them etc etc and that would remove any room for disappointment basically uh, at the end of the day it is a business proposal that you're having with someone else to promote your stuff just as the same it is to do it on a billboard just as the same it is to do it on a tv ad so that is one way please keep in mind that social media isn't the only way that you can promote your products one of the most biggest tools i would say is you know on instagram make sure you switch to a business account you will definitely reap the benefits of uh, facebook ads especially because instagram really caters towards that and they separate your dms so that you can from one folder called general i'm going to try and put a video here one folder called general and the other folder called primary and all your requests and it really really helps you keep organized without you having to do anything another thing is the shopping feature so say if someone comes onto your profile you would obviously want them to know that you're selling items and without them having to dm you and have to go on the website uh, instagram puts forward or well, instagram slash facebook puts forward a really easy tool that everyone can access it is the one where you know you have your three tabs which is your tagged pictures your normal feed and in the middle it will be either IGTV or any filters you've made if you've made any. A lot of people have stopped DMing me asking me about prices because I had put up the prices on each of the products I had uploaded. One thing to remember though is you can't do this on a private account. A business account has to be public. I, I am aware that you have to have an actual catalogue of products. So now building on this, let's talk about how you can get your products out there. 
so that's the final step actually i would say it's more of an initial step when you're planning now at this current moment in time it is very popular to have an e-commerce website which means basically you have everything online whether it's a service whether it's clothes whether it's whatever you're selling a lot of people just do it online because of the pandemic a lot of people are finding it easier to manage their business online rather than having it in stores or have to go out but we do have to remember that there are some businesses who do have their actual physical shops open getting customers in person what kind of commercial route you're going to be taking will it be you doing everything online um, if you are doing it online what are you going to use are you going to make your own website who's going to help you design it can you design it yourself will you learn how to design it i would say this is where you start bullet pointing and going through the different options of what you might want to do but obviously now is the most important step and that is deciding if that you're going to go for now i get a lot of questions about did i make my own website what did i do what was the process so for me because so for me because i am a computer science student so the first thing I did was I started researching different platforms that I could start selling my items on and the first thing that crossed my mind was I can make my own website I have been at university even before university I was able to make my own website and you know even with back in the day you know with tumblr a lot of people could edit their code I was basically one of them I would always edit my actual code my html code my javascript so front end and back end coding I feel like that was my big step into the coding world whether it is something that's unpredicted so my initial website was coded however i had issues with processing fees and for people to pay online i had a very basic website at first which literally just a html website just a bit of front-end coding to display all the products that i had nothing that where you could actually make payments so when it comes to that it is very difficult to set up payments on website i feel like that is the most hardest thing ever to do recommend one of the best ways is shopify wix squarespace Etsy and Depop. I feel like those are very, very popular methods that people use. But with Shopify and Wix and Squarespace, it is very straightforward. All you have to do is sign up. It is a monthly payment, so you do have to pay for a domain name. If you aren't aware of what a domain name is, get researching. But as far as I'm aware, Shopify makes it extremely easy for you. All you have to do is upload your pictures and then they handle the rest. But that comes at a fee and a cost. So you do have to be aware of that. You do have to be aware of monthly payments, direct debits. And that's where you start budgeting and putting it into your financial plan, trying to see, OK, can I pay for this? Can I pay £20, £30 a month just to hold my website? Will I make enough profit? Will my profit cover it? You know, you have to really start asking yourself these questions. That's what I found myself asking. Eventually, obviously, I had to invest into a processing fee. That is basically the fee that the bank takes for processing payments. Even after all this, I think Etsy and Depop are a really good example. Depop, I believe, take 10% of whatever you make. So it is important for you to add on that 10% when you're selling the product so you can cover that fee. That could be anything from like a pound to you know 10 pounds 20 pounds depending on how much your actual end product is so you have to actually consider that i'm not sure for etsy i've never used etsy to sell items so you might have to check with the terms and regulations for that one but i am very sure of depop because i've sold a few things there and they do take a cheeky little two pound three pound from any 20 pound that you've made so another thing is obviously if you don't want to go if you feel like okay this is too much like i have to figure out a domain name you have to buy your website name like whatever name you want it from something like godaddy and you pay for like i think a year some of them are like as cheap as 99p but it does depend on what kind of website you want the mine is denara.shop i wanted to get denara.co.uk but it did turn out to be a bit more expensive so i just left it i chose denara.shop and it is very simple simplicity is key here you wouldn't want something that's a really really long website that takes a lot of memory space it is business at the end of the day you would want someone to remember your website i think the last final step would be what delivery service you're going to go for whether it's hermes royal mail in the uk or fedex or parcel force or dhl abroad you're going to have to decide who's going to do your deliveries for you because in the uk as far as i'm aware there are some delivery services who aren't particularly reliable especially at this time due to delays and due to the virus so yeah this is a very long video so i'm just gonna cut it here that was what it's like to own a small business and frequently asked questions and i'm gonna try and add a few more bits here and there if i feel like it's missing anything but i feel like i've covered most things i hope this inspires you or helps anyone out there that wants to start their business so yeah thank you guys so much for watching i'll catch you in the next one peace